All right. Hello, uh, everybody. Let me find my um, how to run the Circuit Python meeting thing, which I which went away. All right. Help. Okay. Hello, everyone. This is the Circuit Python weekly meeting for July eighth. 2024. Uh, this is the time of the week when we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. I'm Dan, and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython. Uh, I'm filling in for Tim, whose computer uh, uh, failed in a spectacular way, and so happy to take over for this. Um, you might ask, what is CircuitPython? It's a version of Python designed to run on Titanium computers called microcontrollers. CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit. So if you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to adafru.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython dev text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel. This meeting typically happens on Mondays at 2 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, 11 a.m. U.S. Pacific Time, except when it coincides with the U.S. holiday. In the notes document, which I'll discuss in a minute, there's a link to a calendar you can view online or add to your favorite calendar app. We also send notifications about upcoming meetings via Discord. If you'd like to receive these notifications, then Discord asks us to add you to the at sign CircuitPythonistas Discord role. So as I mentioned, there's a notes document, which is a Google Doc right now, that accompanies the meeting and the recording. You can contribute to this document beforehand. Uh, the final notes document includes timestamps to go along with the video, so you can use the doc to skip around and view the parts of the video that interest you most. The meeting tends to run 30 to 60 minutes. After each meeting, we post a link for the next meeting's notes document to the CircuitPython dev channel on the Adafruit Discord. Check the pinned messages in that channel to find the latest notes doc so you can add your notes for the following meeting. If you wish to participate but cannot attend, you can leave hub reports and status updates in the document for us to read during the meeting. We hold this meeting in five parts. I'll describe each part as we get to it. Okay, and with that, I will start with community news and uh, use my phone uh, thing to get the timestamp. Okie dokie. So this news uh, comes from our weekly Python for Microcontrollers newsletter, which goes out by email on Monday mornings, a few hours before this meeting. You can visit Adafruit daily to subscribe to the newsletter. Thanks to Anne for putting the newsletter together. If you have any Python and hardware projects to share or find content you'd like to see included, please consider contributing to the newsletter. You can open a PR on GitHub, uh, at sign and engineer on various social media places uh, with hashtag CircuitPython or email cpnews at adafruit.com. Okie dokie. So we'll start with some items from uh, this morning's newsletter. Um, first of all, uh, CircuitPython 9.1.0 Beta 4 was released last week. I released it on Wednesday. Uh, it's a new beta for CircuitPython 9.1.0. It's a new unstable release. This release has known bugs that will be addressed before 9.1.0 final. And there's a link to the release notes in the notes document. Um, next up, um, uh, note that PyCon US 2024 videos are being released slowly. The PyCon US 2024 team has released so far 59 videos from the talks at the conference. There are still 95 videos due to drop soon, including uh, Jeff Epler's CircuitPython talk. There's a playlist uh, link in the notes document. But already there are two interesting um, videos that are up. Uh, one is from Juliana Caroline de Sue, which is Introduction to MicroPython, Getting Started with the BBC Microbit. And the other is uh, Radomir Dopirovsky, also known as Deshipu, who did uh, a session on programming robots with CircuitPython. And there's a link to that also in the notes document. All right. Uh, next step, 
um, is creating file bundles, bundles for Adafruit Playground notes. Um, Adafruit Playground is a do-it-yourself thing that looks kind of like a simpler version of the Adafruit Learn Guides, where you can write up things that you uh, want to share with people and share code and things like that. And uh, there's this thing now called the Cookie Cutter Playground Bundle. It's a GitHub Actions workflow demo for creating CircuitPython project bundles to use with download project bundle buttons in a root playground. And um, uh, Sam Blenny uh, is going to talk about this more in the, in the weeds section at the end. So uh, wait for that, but also you can check out the link that's in the notes document. And finally, uh, this week, we want to note a whole bunch of new video, CircuitPython videos from Professor John Gallagher, who's at Boston College. He's local to me, and I've met him uh, at least once, I think twice. And he's got a bunch of videos, which are really interesting. There's CircuitPython School, a free university course in Maker and Electronics, installing CircuitPython on a Circuit Playground Blue Fruit. That's the demo in particular, installing and using PyCharm with CircuitPython, an intro to the REPL, while true, the infinite loop, our first CircuitPython program, print and PyCharm coding basics, intro to example code plus using CircUp for CircuitPython libraries, get flashy, a first NeoPixel program in CircuitPython using the Circuit Playground plus time.sleep, sequences and NeoPixels in CircuitPython, and finally, CircuitPython school solutions. Solutions, Irish Flash, and Roy G. Biv. So take a look at all those videos in the link. And there's a, um, a pointer to the uh, Professor Gallagher's channel uh, at the top of this news item, which you'll probably find interesting also. All right. So as I mentioned, um, uh, this all comes from the Circuit Python on Microcontroller's weekly newsletter. Please check it out at adafruitdaily.com and subscribe if you haven't already. If you'd like to contribute something to the newsletter, we really appreciate it. You can uh, submit a GitHub pull request. You can email cpnews at adafruit.com ta or tag us on various social media sites. Any of those are fine. OK, the next major section of the meeting is the state of CircuitPython libraries and Blinka. So uh, this section is a quantitative overview of the entire project. Uh, it gives us a chance to look at the health of the project separate from our individual status updates. We'll talk about the project overall and then separately discuss CircuitPython core, the libraries, and Blinka. So overall, in the past week, there were 23 pull requests merged, which is very nice. 19 authors. Um, some ones I haven't seen before are Agua Viva, Asi Muhammad, um, I think maybe Karim33338, uh, Birdie B, Eric Almendris, um, Xorific28, and maybe some of these people I've heard before, but they're less familiar names to me. Of those 23 pull requests, they were reviewed by six reviewers. There were 12 issues closed by six people and 11 issues opened by 11 people. And next up is the CircuitPython 4 section. And Scott, are you available to read that? Yeah. All right, so numbers for the core. <clears throat> we had 16 pull requests merged from 14 different authors. Some new names to me are Kiram3338. Uh, Brittany B. Algovida, El Eric Alamandras, uh, Tim Chinowski, Andy Bing, Hasi Muhammad, uh, C. Darius, and Braden Lane are also in frequent contributors, so thank you to them. Uh, we have 22 open pull requests, so the number's gone down a little bit. I think Dan has done some backlog stuff, which has been great. Um, so we're comfortably under the one page goal. Uh, we have five closed issues by four people and seven open by seven people. Um, so again, we're uh, just up two, I guess, uh, for a total of 698 open issues. We track um, Adafruit, Adafruit funded prioritization uh, work based on the milestones. Um, we have two open issues for 910, which will be the next uh, 
uh, stable release. And uh, we have zero open issues again for 82X and 90X, which are the current stable releases. Uh, so we're looking good there. Uh, we also have 30 open issues on 9, 9XX, which are the things that we kind of want to do sooner rather than later. Um, one issue not assigned to Milestone, so we do have a little triage to do, but that's it. And I could, well, I guess I don't know, know who you want to do libraries. Oh, uh, you want to you want to go ahead and do libraries? Sure, that'd be great. Sure, I'd I'd be happy to do libraries since you're you're doing the bulk of the meeting. Okay. Um, usually, usually Tim from the guy does this, but as uh, Dan alluded to, he's having some computer troubles. So, I uh, here's some numbers for the libraries. So these are all of the Python level libraries used in the Circuit Python world, but both Circuit Python and Blinka. Um, so we had four pull requests merged from four different authors. Uh, Arturo182, XSORFC28, Ken Tritz are all new names, and Je Jeff is an uh, old hat at this. So thank you to all our authors. We had two reviewers, uh, Dan and Foamy Guy. Um, the age of the merge pull request varied from one day open to 104 days open. Um, Issues-wise, there was five closed issues by a single person and four open by four people, so net down one. Um, and there's 103 good first issues. So uh, this is a great way to get started into CircuitPython land. Um, you can go to circuitpython.org slash contributing for guidance on where we need the help. Um, this makes it easy because it's Python level stuff rather than in the seaweeds. OK, so stats for PyPI weekly download sets. Um, there were. 140,657 PyPI downloads over 330 total libraries. Um, very common top 10 for PyPI downloads. Requests, bus device, connection manager, uh, register, DHT, ADS 1x15, WizNet 5K, Mini MQTT, PixelBuff, and NeoPixel are kind of the, the top ones, which is no surprise. Um, Updated libraries, LED animation, mini MQTT, request an Adafruit I.O. Uh, in the last seven days. And that's it for the libraries. OK, thank you, Scott. OK, um, next up is the Blinkist section. And Lissa can read that. Thank you. Hello. So Blinka is our circuit Python compatibility layer for MicroPython, Raspberry Pi, and other single board computers. Uh, this week we had three pull requests merged by two authors and one reviewer. There are currently seven open pull requests amongst the, all the repositories. Uh, there were two closed issues by two people and zero opened. There are currently 99 open issues. Uh, there were 14,773 PyPI downloads in the last week, 19,008 PyWheels downloads in the last month, and we are at 133 supported boards. And that's it. OK, thank you, uh, Melissa. So now uh, next up is the Hug Reports uh, section. Um, Hug Reports is a chance to highlight folks for the in the CircuitPython community and beyond for doing awesome things. I'll start, and then we'll go down the list. Um, in, in the notes document to give everyone a chance to participate. If you are text only or missing the meeting, I'll just read your notes when I get to them in the list. All right. So first up, um, is uh, me. Let's get my stopwatch here. Okay. Um, so first, uh, thanks to Unexpected Maker who uh, worked a lot on trying to debug this ESP32 C60 problem and help narrow things down. That was really appreciated. And I'll talk about that more in status report. And then thanks to Tim Chinowski, Tim Chinowski, who's um, fixed a bunch of things recently, including a whole bunch of like off by one kinds of errors having to do with like PWM and other things like that, the internal registers that are used for various um, peripherals and it makes it, it it fixed some glitches which were annoying and uh, worse than annoying in some cases so we really appreciate that uh, next up is uh c grover i'll read theirs uh thanks to foamy guy 
for his enlightening and brain cell expanding uh, display IO image shearing video stream and a group hug. And next up is Foamy Guy. Uh, I'll read theirs. Um, thanks to Dan for filling in to host today and to Jeff for offering to run a backup recording. Uh, yes, we really appreciate that because my I was trying to use the uh, normal recording engine and it was just crashing on my computer. Thanks to GitHub user Jesse for adding a convenient option to CircUp for installing the libraries locally to get use out of IDE helper functionality. And thanks to Sam Blenny for making and sharing a playground project bundler template for cookie cutter along with very detailed documentation about what it's for and how it works. All right, and next up is Jeff. Hello, I wanna start off by thanking Chris Drake on GitHub who goes by GitCND uh, for following up on a fairly nebulous issue with a very clear and testable reproducer script. Dan, thanks for stepping up to host the meeting today. Anne, Dan, and Tim for merging some of my PRs over the last week, and Tim for making a release of the uh, Adafruit request library for me, and Scott for starting to look into the Matter protocol for some IoT things. All right, thank you, Jeff. And next up is Liz. Hey, uh, so hug to Scott and you, Dan, for work on the Expressive BLE support, and a group hug. All right, thanks. And next up, Maker Melissa. I just had a group hug for everyone. All right, thank you. I'd like to point out, uh, if you scroll back in Circuit Python Dev, there's a very nice picture of a brick that says group hug that somebody found uh, in, in on the ground somewhere. So take a look at that. And next up is Retired Wizard and Ari Bears. Uh, thanks to Jacob C. Rigby. We're working on the SDIOIO module for the Express support. And thanks to Foamy Guy for a great deep dive episode on BitMed graphics again this week and a group hug. And finally, Scott is up for hug reports. Hello, uh, another one for Tim Chinowski, uh, who posted a sample of a prototype that's prototyping audio input into the audio pipeline. I'm very excited about that and we'll look at it shortly. All right, thank you, Scott. Okay, uh, next up is status updates, which is our time when we tell folks what we're up to individually. As before, I'll start and we'll just go through the list in the notes document. When I call on you, take a couple of minutes to talk about what you've been doing since the last meeting and what you'll be doing until the next meeting. This is also an opportunity to provide tips and tricks relevant to what people are working on. And if there's something that's more complicated to talk about, we can always talk about it in the in the weeds section which comes after status updates. All right, I'll start. So I'll just uh, note, as mentioned already, I released CircuitPython 910 beta 4 uh, last week. Um, this in particular fixes a bunch of BLE issue, B expressive BLE issues, uh, which uh, were present in, in beta 3, and uh, there were a whole bunch of other changes also. So please try out this beta. We really appreciate the testing. And uh, it's really quite usable for BLE on Espressive now. I tested it with multiple BLE peripherals. And I'm, what I'm going to be working on in the next week, the last few 910 bugs, I have two in particular that are hard crashes, so we really should fix them. Um, over the weekend, I fixed an issue with uh, internals of serial port use on the ESP32C6, which caused it make it impossible before this bug was fixed you couldn't use thani or similar programs with the esp32 c6 and now you can again and this might fix some other serial kind of flakiness on uh chips especially that don't have um native usb but we'll see uh next up is foamy guy and i'll read theirs um setting up setting down circa BLE workflow integration for a bit. I don't know if the problem lies in bleak, async IO, click, or somewhere between, but for some reason, some of the commands are causing the code to go into an infinite loop after sending the BLE command and receiving the result. Other commands seem to magically finish at the appropriate time after receiving the result, but MakeDir and others just get stuck some portion of the time, presumably in an infinite loop. When that occurs, the BLE device is also stuck in the connected state, but will not communicate 
with subsequent attempts, and the only way I've found to get back is to toggle BLE. So we'll probably look at those as issues in the future. I have been unable to make any sense of any reason some commands are different I'm getting stuck, and we'll try again with fresh eyes after working on some other things. Started working on display I.O. helper to rotate bitmaps using a technique which shears the image three times an amount based on a formula with some trig operations based on the desired angle. It's well suited to very small images with important single pixels that are where the rotation methods can cause to disappear or distort. Computer died this morning. I think the main hard drive is broken or corrupted. Working on getting a new OS instance set up and then hoping to be able to recover some of the files after some kind of disk repair operations. Okay, well, Tim, I hope that you're get able to at least recover your work. That would be important. All right, and next up is Jeff. Hello, Hello. so I sent a new guide on MP3 playback for moderation. This covers all of the enhancements that I've done recently for streaming and just covers some of the basics because we didn't have a dedicated guide about that yet. I fixed an interesting bug in serial bytes available that may have been causing a problem reported on GitHub. It would report two bytes available when there was really only one byte to read, and so if your program then actually asked to read two bytes, it would freeze until a second character was entered. I submitted some pull requests to Adafruit requests and CircUp. The Adafruit request stuff is to support MP3 streaming, and the CircUp change allows you to use CircUp with your web workflow device if you have a non-default port number specified in settings.toml. The Adafruit request stuff was released, the CircUp stuff is not. I uh, worked this weekend on some of my personal projects that use Rough. I found out that when I uh, put Rough configuration in, most of the diagnostics were not actually enabled. So in these projects, I turned on a bunch more diagnostics and fixed them, and so I'm getting a lot more uh, use out of Rough now. That's really exciting for me. Uh, and next up, I will be starting to learn about the Matter IoT library. And Scott suggested that I build the demos from Espressif and see if it works with the uh, Google Nest Hub and or Apple HomePod, which are little pieces of hardware that I picked up for working on this project. And I will be out this Wednesday and Thursday. So it's a short week from me. That's what I got. All right. Thank you, Jeff. And next up is Liz. Hey. So I took the end of last week off for the July 4th holiday, got in a lot of outdoor time with friends. And this week I'm back. I'm continuing to work on the Vindrickning drop in board with an ESP32 S2. We are now calling it the Vindy S2. Uh, so I have prototypes in and I'm now testing things. Right now it seems to kind of be half working. Uh, so there's at least one more hardware rev revision in the future. And then I tested out the new beta with um, of CircuitPython with BLE on the ESP32 S3 and found that the Apple Notifications Library is working really well. So I'll be doing a quick uh, CircuitPython project with the ESP32 S3 Feather and a TFT Feather Wing to show and control Apple Media and notifications. Okay, great. Thank you, Liz. I'm glad to hear that BLE, yes, President BLE is working for that. Yes, thank and you for all your work on next that. Next up is Melissa. Hello, Melissa, are you available? Hi, sorry about that. Uh, let's see, I finished up writing a guide for the USB workflow, but it's on hold due to bugs in the USB workflow. I updated the web workflow learn guide, and I'm currently working on tracing down the connection issues with the USB workflow. All right, thank you. And next up is Sam Blenny. I'll read theirs. Um, I made a cookie cutter project template to follow up on the June 24th in the week's discussion about creating project bundles for playground guides. My template provides a GitHub actions workflow to make a project bundle according to config in a manifest file. I also wrote a playground guide with a download project bundle button to demonstrate how it works. I'd be happy to transfer my cookie cutter re repo to Afruit if that would be useful. All right, man. Thank you. I thought it was for some reason I thought it was in the it's the weeds discussion, but it's not. Okay, and finally it's Scott. Hello. Um, I'm getting back into the swing things after a short holiday week. Um, I also got sick, so I haven't been in the office here. 
Uh, what I'm looking at is adding uh, CircuitPython support for Matter. Uh, it is the newest IoT standard. It is complicated, but designed to just work. Um, and I just want to caveat right at the get-go that I'm targeting hobby use, uh, not commercial use. So I think if we do this, we'll probably have people come and be like, I want to sell this thing, and, uh, and they'll have extra work to do. Uh, this matters specifically for certificates and OTA, which uh, you tend to not do when you're targeting the hobby, the hobby part of the spec. So keep your eyes for that. Okay, thank you, Scott. So uh, we've got no in the weeds discussions, unless anybody has something you want to bring up. But it seems not. So we can wrap up with a quick meeting this week. Uh, the next meeting is a week from today, Monday, July 15th, 2024. So thank you, everybody, for attending. And um, we're looking forward to hearing what's happening next week. And you can stop recording.